iOS software updates continue to pump out at a rapid pace, and today Apple just released the fifth developer beta for iOS 16.1, coming just one day after the release of iOS 16.0.3 and a week after the previous beta. So as usual, this should be out for public beta testers very soon as well. Now, in addition to this iOS release, Apple also released iPadOS 16.1 beta 6, and of course this shows up as iOS 16 beta 12, we also got macOS Ventura Beta 11, watchOS 9.1 Beta 5, tvOS 16.1 Beta 5, and HomePod OS 16.1 Beta 5. But of course, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS in this video. So first off, let's take a look at the size of this fifth beta. And you can see here, it came in at just under 600 megabytes on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. That size will vary depending on the version you're coming from and your device, but this was coming from Beta 4. And before we talk about what's new in the software let's take a look at the new build number so if we go into our settings and go to general about 16.1 we can see the new build number here is 20b 5072b and then if we go down to the modem firmware that has also received a minor update here so it's now 1.13.02 so it's 0 0.01 on beta 4. so now what's new here in beta 5 and the first thing i want to discuss is a follow-up on the most controversial change in beta 4 and that is this up here the outline around the dynamic island and you can see here in beta 5 it is a little bit more subdued but it is not gone completely so you can see we still have an outline there when something in the dynamic island is active like if we're playing music or if we start a timer so if i go into my clock right here and i start a timer and then go back out you can see we have the orange outline around the timer up there and white around the now playing the music and keep in mind you only see this when you have a dark background so if you have a light background like for example if i go over here and change this to a light background like this and we go ahead and look up at the dynamic island you can see there is no outline around it so it's really only if you have a dark wallpaper going on on your home screen or on your lock screen so you know it's not a huge deal to me it's actually grown on me quite a bit especially when it's a little bit more subdued here in beta 5. now one of the headlines from last week that was pretty interesting is that the crash detection feature has actually been triggered via roller coaster rides so if you have an iphone 14 series or a new apple watch with the crash detection feature a roller coaster would trigger that so i cannot confirm obviously if that has been fixed here in beta 5 just yet so if i do go on a roller coaster anytime soon i will let you know but that is not planned but hopefully apple does fix that because you know emergency services were showing up at theme parks because they thought somebody was in danger when in reality they were just on a roller coaster so we'll have to wait and see if that has been fixed but i would assume by the time 16.1 rolls out to everybody that will indeed be fixed now if you guys remember in beta 4 i talked about how the keyboard haptic feedback was a little bit more subdued and a little bit lighter than it was in previous versions of ios 16 and that has not changed here in beta 5 so i was hoping it was not a bug and it seems like it's not a bug so we have a more subdued lighter haptic feedback when typing on the keyboard and i like it a lot better and speaking of previous betas if we go into our settings and go to general you will see that we still do not have the matter section so that was in settings in beta 2 that was when it first appeared and then after beta 3 it was gone and has still not reappeared so matter 1.0 officially launched last week and of course apple is planning to add support here in 16.1 but we might just not be seeing that settings pane until the rc build or the final release of 16.1 and something else that was taken away is live activities in the tv application like following sports scores and things like that that is still not returned here with beta 5 so hopefully the rc build will see the return of live activities in the tv application but as of beta 5 they're still not working we also have a change in the shortcuts application so now if you go into a shortcut or if you create a new one and you tap on the top menu and go to choose icon all of the glyph icons are now categorized by you know devices camera and photos gaming connectivity it's now categorized instead of just being one big glob 
of glyph icons. And then as usual, we do also have some changes in the code here in 16.1 beta 5. So you can see these are just some changes on the back end with this update. Now, as far as bugs go, we still have the bug where we swipe down on the control center. And you can see we have a little bit of lag here with my HomeKit devices. When I swipe down, they kind of just don't appear at first. And it's like a very laggy, glitchy look there. So that was there in beta 4. And you can see it has still not been fixed here with beta 5. So hopefully that gets fixed in the RC build. But that bug is nothing compared to the major bugs I had in beta 4, which were severe battery drain and really bad cell connectivity. So I hope that both of those are fixed here in beta 5. It really just came out of nowhere on beta 4. So hopefully we do see a change or a fix for that. So we did get a modem firmware update. So we could very well see improved cell connectivity, but we'll have to wait and see. I will let you guys know in my Apple Weekly episode on Saturday if those have been you know tweaked and fixed and then some users are also still having the screen flickering bug so some users still have that as late as 16.1 beta 4. So if you had that issue, let me know if it has been fixed here in beta 5, as I have not faced that issue at all on any of my devices. However, one thing I can say that has been fixed with this update is the random respring's when your device is charging. So that was fixed a while back on the public releases, but it was never fixed in the betas until just beta 5, at least for me. So when I was plugging my device in, it did not randomly respring one time. So thankfully, that really annoying bug has been patched. And then the CarPlay issues related to mic sensitivity should be fixed here with beta 5 as they were fixed in the 16.0.3 release that came out yesterday to the public and then taking a look at the release notes unfortunately we do not have any resolved issues only known issues so you can see we have a few here for home and then also a known issue for memory allocation as far as the performance goes this fifth beta actually feels the best yet as far as my first initial impression and usually that tends to be right in the long term so so far performance actually feels really good everything just feels a little bit more fluid we still have that annoying bug where we swipe down and we have that bug there in the control center but as far as just overall raw performance and just switching pages on my home screen and things like that performance feels a little bit better so we'll wait and see what the geekbench scores are here in a minute so we scored an 1892 on the single core and a 4840 on the multi-core so you can see how that compares to previous betas that is the highest single core yet in ios 16.1 the betas now the multi-core is much lower but that's likely just because the device is really hot right now so i will rerun that at a later time but the single core looks promising at 1892 there and then as far as the battery life goes obviously it's too early to tell just yet if beta 5 has improved over beta 4 but my first impressions lead me to believe that it will be better than beta 4 because beta 4 was just absolutely horrendous for me i lost so much battery on beta 4 so hopefully beta 5 does improve on that and of course i will give you guys an update in my next apple weekly episode on saturday and then finally let's talk about what to expect next from apple so today is october 11th now we should be seeing the rc build next so we do have a b at the end of this build number which means that an a build is most likely coming next so we should see that next week on the week of the 17th of course apple has been loving those tuesday releases so it seems likely that the 18th is when we'll see the rc build and then the final on the week of the 24th we could actually see that release on the 24th of course that does depend on when apple plans to release new products along with ipad os 16 and mac os ventura so the next two weeks should be fun and then after that of course we will probably go to a 16.2 beta that same week or the following week so there you have it that is ios 16.1 beta 5 a relatively boring update but that is expected with a fifth beta hopefully the rc version gives us a lot of the features we've been missing and we kind of have had but taken away hopefully we see those come back with that rc build but that is yet to be seen of course keep it locked to the channel i will keep you guys informed of everything related to ios 16. so if you enjoy that and if you enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe for a lot more ios 16 coverage but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon Thank you.